Coming up this weekend at Flyweight, can Daniel De Silva Lacerda's wildness lead him to victory or will it lead him to a fourth straight loss by finish? We're going to find out and he's going to be taking on the Pete Sprott Muay Thai protege. It's CJ Vergara. As always, we're getting excited for another flyweight matchup. Oh, and yeah. I say that every single weekend when we do have one of these flyweight fights because these two guys aren't in the rankings. They're not on the fringes of the rankings. They're closer to the bottom than they are to the top of the overall hierarchy when it comes to this division. But both guys have had their moments even in their fights. And that might sound a little bit squirrely considering what I just said about Daniel Da Silva, who's been listed as Lacerda coming into the UFC. Then it's Da Silva. Now if you look up his fights on Fight Pass, it's all Lacerda all the time. But for Miojo and the guy whose first name is Daniel, if you look at him, just numbers on a page, even just Fighter on his Instagram page, and I'll throw up a picture there, he's always posing with the celebrities. He, he is. is a guy out of Shoot the Box Diego Lima, so there's a lot of pictures with him with Charles Oliveira, Alan Nascimento, uh, Thomas Almeida, a lot of really good fighters out of that gym. And Daniel Da Silva, what he was known for outside of the UFC before he made his foray into it was the spinning attacks, his really, really edgy ground game because okay. he'd really try and force position quickly. And inside of the UFC, I can break down the fights, Matt, in under well, 15 seconds. This Go is ahead, my whole thing about Daniel De Silva. Well, I don't know. Quick, come on now. This is the thing about Daniel De Silva. He reminds me of a guy who you watch in like college basketball and you think he's going to be really good, scores a ton of points, then he gets drafted at the end of the second round and like doesn't play for an NBA team. Because when you want to talk about the positives and when you see some of those positives come out in his fighting style, they're easy to get excited about because he is so aggressive aggressive and he's a guy who's looking for a finish at every moment throughout the fight. Now, will he get caught sometimes because he is so aggressive looking for those finishes? Yes, he will, but that's the weird thing about these fighters and I just, I don't want to get into the odds just yet, but I know we will talk about them near the end of the video, but these two fighters to me are in very different categories of like UFC opponents, if you will, because Vergara is one of these guys, we talk with them all the time now. He's got a good baseline of skills, so I really like him as an opponent for these up-and-coming prospects. We saw it in his last matchup against Tetsuo Taiga. We know how good of a prospect he is, how dominant his wrestling can be, and that was a bridge too far, if you will, for CJ Vergara, but I still like what his skill set is. We know what he can give us, we know what he isn't going to give us, and that's the weird thing about De Silva. He's been given a lot of chances at this point, and I know the flashes are brilliant, and they do make him look really good. It's just at this point in his career, I wonder if he can just sustain a game plan long enough to deal with a guy like Vergara, who, if anything, he's pretty tough. He keeps a decent pace. He's not going to leave those big openings that a guy like De Silva will, and that's why this fight is so interesting to me, because it's a tale of two very different fighters. So Daniel might as well switch his nickname or his last name to Daniel Fredette, if that's what we're going based off a of. A little but bit, yeah. He could go to China and be the greatest, though. But we're looking at Daniel. I think Daniel... Daniel has a really easy path to victory against a guy like CJ Vergara. Vergara leaves a lot of openings on the feet. And the other thing about both these guys is we touched on it earlier in the Venetia Salvador fight, but Daniel De Silva was supposed to fight him back in December. De Silva missed weight by three pounds. He was forced off of the card. CJ Vergara is cut from that same cloth. He missed weight against Tatsuro Taeda. He missed weight when he came in on short notice in his debut against Odie Osborne. He also missed weight on the regional scene for a Fury FC flyweight title against Solis. And in that fight, he he won it, but he's missed weight three times. He's had bantamweight fights where he's just a little bit under. And he's not huge for the he's, division. He's had catchweight fights as well. But for Daniel Da Silva, three fights really quick. And this is where I want to hammer home this point. Fights Jeff Molina. Jeff Molina in that fight, first round runs her across the cage, gets his back really, really quickly, slips out of position, Molina ends up on top, second round, Molina drops him once, gets on top, stacks guard, finishes him by TKO. Then he takes on Francisco Figueredo, has a really good fundamental game plan in that one, gets the fight down to the mat, gets caught in a knee bar, he's not Gumby, he's not Mohamed Makayev, Figueredo takes home that knee, and then his last time out, he takes on Victor Altamirano, he drops Victor early, he then gets taken down and finished, stack guard, Altamirano gets the finish. For Vergara, in his debut, takes on Ode Osborne, loses by unanimous decision. Most people thought that he beat Ode Osborne in that fight. Then he takes on Cletus and Rodriguez. He wins that fight by split decision. Most people thought Rodriguez won that one. And his last time out against Taita, he got controlled for large portions of the first round. Second round, a little bit of a rebound until he ends up succumbing to that armbar. A submission that I guess you don't really see as often in the men's MMA, but it's making a comeback if you watch the fights as of late. So again, we look at this one, Daniel Da Silva, the last thing I will say, we'll give him his credit where it's due. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, and before he came into the UFC, he was a casket maker, a little bit ominous. His hero, 
The big man the upstairs, Undertaker? Matt. Oh, okay. Not The Undertaker. Jesus Christ. Or both. I mean, listen, he's coming for your soul. But when it comes down to this one, we have a look at the odds. Yes, CJ Vergara is about a 3-1 to one favorite. I feel like it's a little unjust based on both of their performances because, again, CJ Vergara's best form is the guy that knocked out Bruno Correa, lands that right hook, drops him, and then hits him with the knee, and it's all over. But a guy who can keep a pace throughout a fight is CJ Vergara. Daniel Da Silva, he burns hot. We have a look at the top topology vote. Surprise to us there to you. I'm going to say over under 75% Vergara. I think they'll be over. I think they're going to be over. They are way over 696 total votes. 93% Vergara, 60% by knockout for the 7% that have De Silva, 41% by decision. The sexy pick is the underdog pick, Matt and Daniel De Silva. I can't find myself going with him I in just this can't, one. Exactly. But I do think he has a better opportunity than the odds and the fans would suggest because Daniel De Silva is one of those guys that can land really good counters. He has a hard time gauging distance, and that's what I think might get him but caught. But you can't fault any of the topology voters or the odds makers for putting Daniel De Silva in this place. Like, I agree with you. He is more dangerous than the odds would suggest, but this isn't one of those fights where I'm like, oh my goodness, Daniel De Silva's a plus 220. He has been finished in numerous fights in all of them. And it's just, it is concerning because even when he does have a little bit of success, he doesn't really keep it going. He will end up making that one big mistake. And those big mistakes will get you caught against a guy like Vergara, who might not have the highest ceiling in the division, but he has a steady enough floor, I think, just because, again, we know what he's decent at. So I do have Vergara in the matchup, but it should once, be a fun fight. Once Pete Spratt fought Robbie Lawler, and years down the line, people say, remember that time CJ Vergara fought Daniel Da Silva? Both of us going with the man that's fighting at home, San Antonio, Texas' own CJ Vergara, to get the win. Some big time matchups on the card, including a main event up a weight class. It's Marlon Vera taking on Corey Sandhagen. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.